guys? I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnette, and welcome to my channel. So I'm happy to be back in my plant room because I miss it. I miss recording in here. Even though I do still love recording in my office, it's just so nice to have like this planty background. I try to make my office as planty as I can, but I am now starting to run out of shelf space. I'm also one of those people that I'm just so like, I'm so in between wanting to be like minimalist versus like having a ton of plants. So I'm always fighting with myself with like decor and stuff, but I'm really happy to be back in my plant room for the next few videos. So let's talk about why you guys are here. And that is my top five easiest houseplants. These are going to be plants that are the easiest to care for in your house, in my house. Really these plants I cannot recommend more. If you're collecting houseplants and you need just an easy plant to add to your collection, these are it. These are by far the easiest plants that I have in my collection. So I'm gonna go over the five houseplants that are easiest in my collection. I'll give you care tips, basically what I do. I'll let you know like where they live in my house, kind of like for lighting. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see these easy houseplants. So the first houseplant that I wanna talk about today is this ZZ plant. This is like my second oldest plant. Like it is just so pretty. It actually sits in my kitchen, a northeast facing window. So it doesn't get a ton of light. It does get a little bit sprinkled through like during like sunset, like that golden hour. It really gets like good sun. But for the most part, it doesn't get really that much sun. So this sits back there in my kitchen. My husband actually uses this as his like, backdrop and all of his like he does like he has like a beer instagram so this is always the background in that which is, i think is kind of funny but i mean this is just i just can't get over the beautiful leaves now for me when i take care of this plant i water it probably every honestly like 12 to 15 days I kind of water it every other time I water the rest of my plants in my plant room. So it doesn't get water every time. As you can see, I actually, because I, my, one of my last videos, I've been dealing with mealybugs, I got systemic. So you can see some systemic like on the topsoil. I actually just put it on there because I'm like, I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna randomly water this and I'm not gonna treat it. So I kind of just sprinkled that on and it's just waiting for water. So I water this very, very sporadically. Honestly, it's doesn't barely gets watered, probably twice a month. Honestly, if that, I mean, the fall and winter, I water obviously probably maybe once a month. But this plant is just such an easy plant. It's a good low light plant. It will grow better, obviously, if you keep it in a medium to bright area, but it does still grow for me in the low light area. I do find that it actually grows better in the fall and winter. That could be because of the lighting. Um, I do feel like my kitchen is a little bit more brighter in the fall and winter where my plant room gets a little darker. I don't know if that's the direction of the sun or where my windows are at, or I don't really want to get into all of that, but it does tend to grow better in the fall and winter. That's a ZZ plant. It's just a really easy to care for plant. I see this plant all the time at Lowe's and Home Depot. You can get this plant literally anywhere and for really cheap as well. Now on the topic of easy to care for plants and also plants that I have had in my collection from almost the beginning, I'll talk about my snake plant. This big <laughs> snake plant is my first ever plant. This snake plant is just, it's sentimental, it's sentimental. Look at, like, and it's just like living its life in this big basket. So this snake plant does sit in my dining room area, which is closer to the window than the ZZ. It does grow a little bit better. I have noticed that it has not grown as much. It actually used to live, if you guys see in my like older videos, 
it used to live right back here, like behind me. And it definitely grew a lot better, but it still grows really well. You will notice that it will start growing like kind of skinny your leaves. <laughs> You might notice that it will grow like skinnier leaves if you put it in a lower light setting. I haven't noticed a ton of stunted growth. It's still growing pretty well. I make sure that I water and fertilize this in the spring and summer. This gets about the same amount of water as the ZZ, maybe even less. Honestly, I could let this plant go for an entire month before I need to water it. If you have a smaller snake plant, you probably need to water it a little bit more but honestly, snake plants are just so easy breezy. They don't even like, I've forgotten about this plant so many times in so many of my waterings. Even you'll see in my plant chores, like you won't see me watering this plant just because I, I never water it. And it's still pretty good. It's still thriving a good amount. <laughs> so my snake plant is just my easiest plant. One of my easiest plants. It's definitely a plant that you'll want to add to your collection. There are so many varieties of a snake plant or Sansevieria. I have a moonlight behind me that does okay. It's not really growing that great, but I have a moonlight behind me and yeah, they just do really well. They do really good. This is very <laughs> sentimental to me because it was like my first plant. I actually have a funny story about this plant. So I have like a little blog about me and this plant, which is kind of lame, but. So when I first moved into my house, which was about five years ago, I was sort of into plants. I was more into like succulents and cacti, but you know, I just, I really didn't care like about plants that much. I mean, I liked them, but like, I knew that I couldn't keep them alive. I had so many plants in my collection over the years, like here and there that I killed. So I'm like, I have a black thumb. I'm gonna kill the plant. I don't wanna be a plant mom. Like I, ca I can't live that life. Now look at me. <laughs> I went to Lowe's and my husband was just like looking up like home improvement stuff. We had just moved in and I went to the plant section and I'm like, maybe we can get like a cool plant because this, room gets so much great lighting and i was like we could just add like a little greenery like whatever one plant and i see this snake plant and i knew nothing about snake plants or stands of areas i knew nothing about them so <laughs> i saw a little tag on it and it said that it was a plant of steel which is kind of what costa farms calls their like really easy to care for plants which um, is definitely a great name for it because you can't kill a snake plant. Like, even if you do, they're easy to propagate. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, right, like whatever. I wound up actually buying it, obviously. And uh, I mean, we're five years later and it's still huge and just wild and just like, such a pretty staple in my dining room. So my next easy to care for plant is a plant that's going to always be on this list and that is a pothos. So this is my Marble Queen pothos. Probably saw this on my last video. So we are still dealing with some mealybugs, but I'm happy to report that it's been over two weeks and I haven't found one yet, but I still don't think I'm in the clear. There's a piece of perlite. I thought it was a mealybug. But yeah, so pothos, great. They're so easy. Don't listen to me when I'm like, oh, I have mealybugs, like whatever. You can get mealybugs on any plant. So not only are pothos really easy to care for, but they're also gorgeous. They're just such pretty plants. They are just like, I don't know, they're just so pretty and trailly. So if you have like a hanging planter or anything like that, these are great to just put in a hanging planter and just like hang, hang from your window or hang from your ceiling. They're probably the easiest plant to propagate. They actually have a natural rooting hormone in the plant. So if you actually have a plant that you're kind of rooting in water and it's having a little bit of a hard time, you can add a cutting to the water propagation and it will help accelerate the rooting, which I thought was really interesting. But I mean, pothos are super easy. 
For this pothos, I water it about every week. I would say every like seven to 12 days, kind of depending on where the pothos is at. I have a pothos in a lower light setting that doesn't need to be watered as often, where this one sits in kind of like a southeast window, kind of away from it a, a little bit, but it sits in this room that gets a lot of bright light. Uh, so I think it needs to be watered more often just because of the sunlight and the airflow in this room. You wanna give your pothos a brighter light, especially if you have a variegated version like this Snow Queen, it will promote more variegation and just kind of be super pretty. If you have like a jade pothos, you can actually put that in a lower light setting. I have a jade pothos in my dining room area and it does just as well. You'll start to notice that once the trail starts to get really long or you have it in a lower light setting that the leaves might get smaller. You can promote bigger leaves if you put the pothos on a moss pole or really just giving it something to climb. Here in Florida, there's pothos like giant leaf pothos that grows wild out in the out in the world. So it's really interesting to see versus like the one we have in our house. So the next easy to care for plant is a plant that I haven't had for very long, but it's a plant that has just exploded since I've gotten it. And that is a spider plant. Now these plants are kind of those plants that people really don't like. I've, I notice a lot of times that like people don't tend to love spider plants. I don't know why, I think it's probably because it looks like grass. <laughs> it looks like long grass, but I love spider plants. They just give like such a pretty vibe. Honestly, I love, I'm starting to get one here. This can probably, See that maybe? So I'm starting to get little tiny <laughs> offshoots. So I'm really excited about that because I love when they get like crazy and wild. So my dad's girlfriend actually gave me this as like a little pup and it has grown this much. And I think I got it back a few months ago, honestly. It wasn't really that long ago, but I got it as a pup and it has just grown so, so well. Like, it's just wild. I love wild, like crazy plants. Like, they're just super fun. This plant, because it's in a low light setting, like pretty low, actually sits next to the northeast facing window. Because this doesn't get a ton of light, I only water it every 10 to 12 days. Um, I start to see that it will start to kind of droop a little bit and kind of the leaves will actually, you can see, I actually just watered this a couple days ago. You can see the leaves kind of like curl in like that. And that's an indication that it is thirsty. So I love a plant that will let me know what it needs. This plant is definitely one of those. Also my pothos is a plant that will let you know what it needs, when it needs it, which is great. Like, I love that. This plant is honestly just such a good plant to add to your collection. It keeps poking me in the eye and it's growing so well, even though I have moved it to a kind of a lower light area versus the Southeast window, which is like prime, it's like prime real estate, but I thought that Brazil would be better in it. And I kind of wanted to experiment <laughs> with it in a lower light setting because I hear that these are okay in there. Obviously you're gonna get bigger growth. You're gonna get like more of these kind of growing out if you put it in a brighter area, but we're experimenting for now and so far it's doing pretty well. So my next easy to care for plant is actually a plant that we're going to have to go to because it's way too big for me to even show you guys. So let's go. So my next easy to care for house plant is the Monstera Deliciosa. This Monstera has grown so much for me. I actually got it and it almost looked like a giant Hartley philodendron. And I spent a good amount of money on it, which, you know, thinking back on it now and seeing them at Lowe's and stuff, but totally fine. I am just absolutely in love with my Monstera. I, it's like a showstopper in my plant room. Like it is just such a pretty plant. I actually have my Monstera Deliciosa on a moss pole, kind of. It's really not attached to the moss pole. I actually got like a cheap 
kind of moss pole from Amazon and it never attached to it. I've had it for, I've had that moss pole for a long time and it's just never attached to it. I've tried to keep it wet, whatever, it just won't, it won't attach. So I am actually just using it as a stabilization. So I have it all tied up at the bottom here. So, you know, just to make sure that it stays up. It sits in obviously my plant room. I'm still in my plant room. It gets bright light from this curtain back here and also the two windows. Uh, my north, my southeast facing window is over here. So it kind of gets the light from behind it. I water this plant every, I would say every 10 days, around seven to 10 days. Um, it does typically need a little bit more water than the other plants on this list, probably as much as the pothos. But this plant is just such a beautiful plant. Like I can't tell you guys to get a Monstera enough. I hope that for those who don't have a Monstera Deliciosa that this might encourage you to get one because they're just such a great plant. The only thing that I'm worried about <laughs> is when it gets really big. I'm gonna be like, I have no space for it. So that's the only issue I think with the Monstera for me is eventually I'm gonna run out of room because these leaves are huge already. This is the newest leaf, but we have one working on the back of it. So uh, we're definitely gonna be getting more leaves soon, which is fun. It's fun, but I'm a little nervous about it. Monsteras, really all the Monsteras that I have in my collection, I'll kind of loop into this category, but really this is the easiest plant. This is the, the easiest Monstera. If you're looking to get into Monsteras, I would get this one first, and then you can get into like, my um, sub, sub Panada is super easy, and it has been growing like crazy. I might do like a uncommon easy houseplant list, and that one will definitely be will definitely be on there because it's just so easy to care for and it's just super no frills. So those are my top five easiest house plants. Those are plants that I can guarantee you can add to your collection and you won't kill. These are plants that are pretty much on every easy to care for plant list like out there. I did a video, I think I did like the top three easiest plants way, 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 way long ago. And I wanted to like kind of do an update on that too. I know this is more of like a basic video. This you're trying to add to your collection type of video, but it's a very important video for people out there who are maybe wanting to add some greenery into your house and you don't want a plant that is going to be super needy. This is a good video for those people who are just kind of like I was with the snake plant, I really just didn't want to deal with really hard plants. And any of these plants I will vouch for, I will say that they're so easy to care for and they are just great additions to your home. If you have a house that you're trying to add greenery to and you want a, you have a bigger space to fill, the Monstera and the snake plant are going to be probably your best options. And then if you have like an area you want to have a hanging plant, obviously the pothos or the spider plant would be your great option. Or if you have a low light area or an area that you kind of just want like a taller plant, the ZZ plant is really good as well. The ZZ plant actually will get pretty big. Um, I have seen some at Lowe's and Home Depot and also photos of like big ZZ plants, um, but they're obviously in a brighter light area. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite easy to care for plant? What is a plant that I didn't add on here that is super easy? That's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.